I got a haircut. After the immense success of the PlayStation series, I decided to go deeper in computing history and picked up a Commodore 64 from a thrift store. This baby's got up to 3 MHz of clock speed, 64 KB of memory and zero storage from the factory. I know, computers in 1982 were wild. This unit in particular was manufactured in West Germany in 1983, so it's a pretty early model. Let's turn it on. The first thing you can tell is that unlike your 2005 Dell Inspiron with Windows 10, this thing boots up almost immediately after you flick the power switch. It boots up into this horrible blue screen with text that has less contrast than my high school presentations, and you are greeted with a flashing cursor. Right now we are in BASIC. It's a simple interpreted scripting language in which you can do basic stuff with your computer. It's reminiscent of an interpreted Python shell. Most users stayed in BASIC and used its limited programming capabilities. Don't get me wrong, it was great for writing simple programs for home finances and maybe some simple games, but the amazing potential of this computer lies somewhere else, in assembly. What's assembly, I hear you ask? Well, it's a way of ruining your life. Okay, assembly is a little bit more complicated. Which means... Assembly quick lesson! You have a CPU, or the central processing unit in your computer. This CPU does stuff by receiving instructions like Hey man, load this number from memory, or Hey man, add these two numbers together. Every piece of code you write from a AAA game written in C++ to your good-for-nothing calculator in Python has to be converted into these instructions at some point for the processor to, you know, uh, process it. BASIC is interpreted, which means it reads every line of code you write and analyzes it to determine what you want to do on the fly. This is painfully slow and inefficient. The other way to program your Commodore 64 to do something is to use assembly, which is basically writing the raw instructions for the processor instead of having a middle layer like BASIC. Someone actually had to create BASIC in assembly. Poor guy. So let's open the computer to understand it a little bit better. Well, I didn't know that RF regulations were this bad back in the day. The first thing you notice when you break into this thing is that it doesn't look anything like a modern computer. First of all, there is a lot of DIPS. DIP stands for Dual Inline Package, which is basically the type of this chip. And the most important one for us is this one right here, the 6510, which is the CPU of this machine. It's basically a 6502, but with a couple more functions. This is the brains of the computer and it takes in the already mentioned instructions and executes them. Next up is the RAM, which is split up between all of these chips down here, giving the computer its stunning 64 kilobytes of RAM, which was actually quite a lot for that time. Another interesting chip is the 6581, also known as the SID chip. This chip gave the computer amazing sound capabilities, which were almost unprecedented back in the day on personal computers. Take a listen to this sample. So, we explore the CPU, the RAM, the sound, but where does the video come from? To find the video chip, we have to look under this RF shield. And there it is. Let me just clean up some of that thermal paste. This is the 6569, also known as VIC-2. This is where the video of this computer comes from. The Commodore 64 was marketed not only as a home computer, but also as a great gaming machine. So there's no wonder that this computer can play games which are graphically amazing for 1982. Okay, that's all about the guts of this thing for now. But if you want to learn more about these amazing machines, I highly recommend you to go and watch the 8-bit guy who makes amazing videos about these machines and goes into much more detail than I do. So now that we have learned something about the machine, I'm going to program a simple game for it. It's not going to be anything fancy, but I hope you will like it. So I tried coming up with a simple story for the game, but I'm a programmer, not a writer. So. Yeah, that's a problem. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Oh! If 
Finally, could you please turn the page? I read it like a hundred times. <laughs> It's nice to have people to do your work. I mean, I, I forced him to write assembly and he's someone who can't even print some text in Python. Uh... I told him to just create some simple lore for the game. He just freaking went for it, like. And guess what? It works. And it even comes with a bonus in the form of Philip's broken English. And guess what again? It works on the real hardware. If you want to play this game, you just need to download an emulator like Y64 and download the PRG file in the description of this video. You just need to open the PRG file in the emulator and then you can play our game. So we have come to the end of today's video. Please, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe or leave a comment. I do read all of your comments. And if you want, you can join my Discord. Uh, we have a nice community in there and we can have a little chat. Also, you can follow me on Instagram where I sometimes put a little snippets of future videos so you can get get the video a bits of the videos ahead of time which is always nice thank you for watching and i'm out of here bye